Hi, I'm Ken Miller with the National Academy of Sports and Medicine and I have here Carolina Ray of C-Ray Performance. And today we're gonna go over lower body mobility exercises for golfers. So with golf, you have a lot of rotation, not just with the upper body, a lot of people forget that golf is more than just an upper spinal swing. It also requires good hip rotation as we are in the back swing, in that contact zone, and then of course in the follow through. So the hips are doing two different things as I come back. One, this back leg is going through some hip internal rotation as I go through the swing. Then this now lead leg is going through hip internal rotation while the back leg goes through external rotation. So the best thing we can do to help preserve our golfers' bodies is to make sure that they can rotate through the hips which requires a few steps if we're going to do it right. So here we have Carolina, and she's doing some self-myofascial technique on the piriformis, or the glute complex, but we'll call it the piriformis for now. So as you'll see here, she is on that left hip, okay? She is on there with a lot of her weight on the left side, knee flexed, hip flexed, and I'll show you this technique as, as, as a go-to, but to get the hip in a different position, I'll show, I'll have Carolina here show you this with a figure four. So I like to show both techniques to my clients because one, some clients may prefer the first position that she did and some clients may prefer the second position that she did. Now, if it's someone like me, I can appreciate both. I feel it just as good in both positions. So, just like any other self myofascial technique here, we have Carolina, you know, she can scout out the area. She can go from the bottom of the pocket up to the waistband, out to the greater trochanter or the outer hip, and up towards the midline. So that whole surface is fair game to get that area to relax. So she finds a spot and she stays there until that, that tenderness decreases. So whatever that level of tenderness is when she first starts, She's gonna hang out there and stay there until there's about a 50 to 60% decrease in tension. Again, this is despite which form she decides to take, whether it's two feet on the ground or that figure four. All right, perfect. So let's fast forward a little bit. Let's assume she does both sides. And then the next thing we're gonna do is have her get into a classic yoga pose. And this would be called a pigeon. So the pigeon pose, as you can see, she's going to do a little figure four through that forward hip. So in this case, it's going to be that left hip that's going to be feeling all that stretch. So if this is a position that's going to be a little bit too progressed or too demanding, we can regress it by giving her a little bit of support. So we're going to use a, a traditional yoga block. I think this is a three by four block here. And she's just going to put that right under her hip to give herself a little bit of tension relief. So she, it's not like she's trying to crank down into that figure four position, but she's just gonna go ahead and hold that. Her forward leg is gonna be more of a 90 degrees. How's that feeling, first of all? Uh, pretty intense. Pretty intense, right? <laughs> okay. So, of course, the more relief, if this was really too intense, or I see that she was compensating through the low back, or she couldn't hold her hips neutral from here, she's got the hips neutral, so she's, she's opening up that, that front side of that right hip, and she should be feeling a stretch through the back side of that left hip. Is that, is that what we're feeling? Oh, definitely. All right, so from here, she's gonna hold that for about 30, maybe 60 seconds, depending on how long it takes for her to get some relief. So this would be classified as more of a static stretch. So static stretch, just for clarification, is something that we need to do when it comes to improving length in the muscle or for for more of a stabilization or a beginner phase of a program and we want to get a little bit more length and reduce some tightness in the area the static stretch um, is where we want to be okay so again let's let's assume that she does both sides just so that we have some symmetry if both sides are equally tight so once we've gotten the self myofascial technique and then we've gotten into the pigeon pose for our static stretch. Now we're gonna get into a bridge. So now it's time to strengthen up the hips. So once we've got those hip rotators to calm down a little bit, now we want to engage the hips. So here she is, 
Feet hip width apart, hip knee and toe in line. I'm having her open up her shoulders by going palms up, arms straight, hands about waist high. And we're gonna go more of a stabilization level, acute variable selection here. So we're gonna go nice and slow. When I say nice and slow, the tempo is gonna be more like a three, two, one or a four, two, one tempo to where she's gonna raise her hips up for one, then she's gonna hold for two, a little bit of a glute activation here, and then nice and slow for about three to four seconds. Perfect, perfect, perfect. Once her tailbone touches, she's gonna repeat up, okay? And she's gonna hold and then come back down. So Carolina, I'm gonna keep going while I talk a little bit. So how do I know if this exercise is being done correctly? Hip, knee, and toe stay in line. Some people, their knees will wanna collapse in. Some people, their knees will wanna flare out. If this is done properly, the knees stay right where they start during the whole um, exercise set. Now, the other thing we're looking for is that from shoulders to hip, we have little to no movement in the spine. She is actually hinging through that back pocket. So she's keeping good tempo. She's keeping these kinetic chain checkpoints, hip, knee, and toe, hip, knee, and toe on the right and left side, in line from shoulder to hip, Good, stable posture and position. She's not arching through the back. I don't see those lower ribs flaring out. I don't see her head popping up or anything like that. She's doing a great job. She's breathing. Okay, so here we would get about 12 repetitions. How's that feeling? Good. All right, and perfect. So again, we, we got those hip rotators. If we assess them to be overactive, we calm them down a little bit. Now we're gonna engage the glutes. Now the next thing we want to do is what we call a turn step up, okay? So we're going to do a turn step up, but we're going to do this with a balance. So as she stands next to this step, she's going to open up about 90 degrees. She's going to turn towards that up leg and she's going to balance. And then she's going to control, nice slow descent comes down and she'll put both feet back on the ground. She'll actively step up and she'll turn. And when she's in this balanced position, I'm looking for shoulders level, hips level. So it's not like she's dropping the hip. Steps up, turns, faces that up leg, shoulders level, and she is slow on descent. So just like what we did in the floor bridge, she had a very slow descent. So she comes up for one, holds for two, and then down for a three, two, one. And we'll get one more in there. Now, one more thing about execution of this exercise is that this right hip, knee, and toe is that as she comes down, I wanna make sure that that knee stays right over the toes and relax. So she did, a, she, did, she did quite a few great ones because <laughs> the, the last couple, I just noticed from my vantage point that that knee started to cave in. But once she tried to make that adjustment, you saw that little bit of collapse at the end. So that's where we would have stopped and I could make a couple changes here. So I either give her a lower step, something that she can control the descent, or maybe do the next set with less repetitions, just enough for her to do them properly and without compensation. So she had really good posture, great control and speed. Now there are just those couple that were questionable, but it's better to stop it when it's questionable than to have her keep going just for the sake of keeping the count up. Yeah, I wanna preserve my athlete here. And because this is more of a starter phase or a beginner stabilization phase, I don't wanna build up a faulty foundation just for the sake of keeping up with the numbers. So again, this routine from foam rolling, stretching, activating the glutes, and then actively stepping up and getting that turn step up and then turn step down are all things that can help out with maximizing hip rotation. So if we are somebody who likes to golf on the weekends or gets out there with your friends every, you know, once a month, once every couple months like I try to do, um, this is one way to help preserve your body and maximize your performance on the course. So give it a try. Let us know how you like it. And thanks for watching.